Now we're going to talk about a very important feature that has come out just in the last couple of weeks, and it uses firmware 12.8 as well as CUCM 11.5 SU8. This feature is called Simple Phone Refresh, and it will come in CUCM 12.5 SU3 later this summer, as well as CUCM 14 when that comes out later on. And this feature essentially allows you to prepare your environment to get rid of your deprecated phones and migrate them to the 78 and 88. This feature is very nice because it can take all of those features that are on your phone, such as speed dials and BLF and uh, multiple lines and all of that. It can migrate them all in its entirety over to the 78 and 88. So I have a, a link there to the deprecated phones, which is a release note that is sort of a forward-looking release note about what will be deprecated in CUCM 14. So you can start preparing now with CUCM 11.5 SU8 or 12.5 SU3. So this feature is very nice. It's kind of a plug-and-play scenario. The, as an end user, you can enter your credentials and it will migrate your phone or you can do it on behalf of the end user as an admin. And there are basically three migration techniques. The first one, which is called the Phone Migration Service Non-IVR, is brand new. Nothing like it has existed in CUCM before. The other two, they're, they existed partially, but it didn't allow you to migrate all of the features, right? So the self-provisioning IVR has been around for a while, and we're going to talk about how we've enhanced that. So let's start with the phone migration service non-IVR and we'll do a little demo of how it works. So before we get to the demo, the scenario is I ship the phone to the end user, they plug it into the network, it does some discovery, there's a screen pop, I enter my credentials. So let's go ahead and do a demo then I'll talk about some of the details. So here's a demonstration. I'm typing in my directory number as an end user. I'm typing in my PIN as an end user. And again, as an administrator, I could do this on behalf of the user. And then success, right? Your phone will be migrated. So this phone is going to reboot and assume the identity of your old, say, 7900 series phone. And now my phone is rebooting. It's registering to UC Manager, and there I have everything from my old phone, let's just say it was a 7900 series, right? So everything has been migrated over. As the end user, life is good. So how does this work? So first off, the phone migration service is always on, right? You can't disable it. The only way to turn it off is to turn off the CUCM service, which you don't want to do. So it's always in there running. Now, the phone, as we had mentioned, needs to have 12.8 firmware, which is bundled with CUCM 11.5 SU8. So as long as you're running that, you're going to get that firmware. Auto registration needs to be disabled. So if this is not a feature you're interested in, one way to bypass it is just enable auto registration. So the way that it works is, as a phone, I know of the call manager's existence through DHCP option 150. So I know how to find CUCM. And then when auto registration is disabled, I will get this pop up on a new phone that has not ever been registered to call manager. And then, then I would enter the credentials. The self provisioning IVR service is not used for this method. You can disable it, but the actual page, the actual call manager page for self provisioning can be used to set the pin or credential policy. We'll look at that in just a second. So in the example that we just looked at, the demonstration, I just migrated everything from a 7975. This is sort of a before and after, and this is an exact, you know, screenshots of what we just saw in the demonstration. And as far as this phone migration service, if you want to configure some policy, you again would use the self-provisioning IVR page, but you don't have to actually use self-provisioning IVR. You can disable that service. So this will allow you to uh, have the users use a password pin. You can also allow the administrator, you can set a super secret administrator pin here. So these are sort of some of the options. Now we're going to take a look at the second method, which is the self-provisioning IVR. 
Now, what I had said earlier was that this existed in some way, shape, or form. So we've had the self-provisioning IVR service in the past, and what it would do is provision you a brand new phone, but it wouldn't migrate anything, right? It didn't bring speed dials or anything. It just put a single line on a phone. This newly improved self-provisioning IVR service will allow you to move everything, just like the other service that we just looked at, the non-IVR service. This one will migrate all your features. So this does require auto registration. So this is how it differs from the first scenario. Auto registration is required. So let's do a quick demonstration of this. Here I have a phone. Provision a new phone. Press 1. To replace an existing phone, press 2. Enter the primary extension, followed by pound key. You have entered 1, 0, 0, 0. Press the pound key to confirm. Enter your PIN, followed by the pound key. Phone migration successfully initiated. This phone will restart after the migration completes. And as you can see, the phone has successfully migrated. And so the end result is no different than if we had done the non-IVR. But obviously, this is a lot more interactive. It's a bit of a different workflow. And the choice is yours as to which provisioning method that you want to, to use. So there are some additional steps you need to take to get this working. You need to actually enable the self-provisioning IVR service. You need to set up a CTI route point and a CTI application user for that route point. And so if you've ever used a self-provisioning IVR, none of this is, is significantly different. It's almost identical. And then you have to, you know, here I've deliberately misconfigured it. You, this is a common error where it says standard CTI enabled needs to be provisioned for that particular application user. So be mindful of that. And then it's very straightforward. You hit number two to do the phone replacement option, followed by the primary extension number with the pound key. And then again, the end result will be the same. And then our last method to do simple phone refresh is using the CUCM admin interface. So the administrator involvement is higher because there's no pathway to get the end user to do anything. The other methods can arguably scale more because you can actually, if you choose, have the end user do it themselves, or maybe you delegate that to the help desk. But with this particular method, the CUCM administrative interface, you're actually using a feature that has existed on Call Manager for a while, but we have enhanced it. And that is you basically take your old, say, 7900 series, you go to the top right in Call Manager, and you choose Migrate Phone. And on the left is what it looked like before CUCM 11.5 SU8. And on the right, you can see that we've actually added the ability to do not just the template, but actual phone type and protocol. So in this example, I'm actually selecting an 8861. I'm selecting the MAC address. And then I, as the administrator, am migrating that phone. And that will also migrate all the features. So those are in essence, the three techniques that we have provided in CUCM 11.5 SU8, as well as the future versions of Call Manager that will be coming out in order to help migrate phones to 78 and 88. Here are a few enterprise parameters that you need to be aware of. So the first one is, do I retain the existing phone in the CUCM database or do I delete it? So this is an important decision because if you delete it, it's gone for good. The end user could never go back to it, right? Or if you had a scenario where you wanted that phone to still be around so the end user could use it. So that's the first decision that you need to decide upon. And the default is retain existing phones. The second one is the security profile. By default, it is secure. You can, however, toggle that to be non-secure. The last scenario is more of an edge case. If you have overlapping directory numbers in your environment, you can toggle this drop down box and select the self service ID. So, this would be applicable if you have, let's say, a retail environment where you have a lot of overlapping directory numbers. 
but for most enterprises, I would say that this is uh, not going to be necessary to adjust. The other thing we've done in the newer versions of Call Manager is I can actually do a search on migrated phones. So we have improved the search capabilities to see, you know, is the phone migrated? How do I find it? That type of a thing. And then another consideration is for the 8800 series, when I do the migration, by default, it will move me to session line mode, right? So the 8800 series has 10 buttons and session line mode will use the left five buttons for programmable line keys and then the buttons on the right are used as sessions but many customers use enhanced line mode where you have all 10 buttons so for that scenario you have two options if you want to migrate the phone to enhanced line mode post migration the first one is to change the line mode parameter on the phone itself which is easy enough to do the second one is if you have a large group of phones is just to use bat, right? You would just do phones, update phones, query, and then use bat to change them from session line mode to enhanced line mode. And then finally, all of this is documented at this URL here that I have posted. And it goes into a lot of details that aren't necessarily obvious unless you're actually doing the migration or testing it out. And that would be, you know, what are the different scenarios? Let's say I have three devices, one's registered, which one will it migrate? So I would refer you to this documentation for a thorough coverage of those scenarios.